I'm health writer and speaker Sarah Moran, and I would love to talk with you today about the trait of highly sensitive person, or HSP. Um, this is a trait seen in 15 to 30 percent of the population, depending on who you ask. Uh, and I always think um, it should have been termed highly perceptive person, since that feels a lot more accurate. But uh, the term is highly sensitive person, so we're just going to go with that. Um, and it's really important for people who are highly sensitive or who care for someone who is to understand the trait um, for the person's physical health and also their emotional well-being. Um, and that's because although this is a trait with a lot of really rich and wonderful gifts, it also comes with, on the flip side, a lot of challenges for living in the modern world that we find ourselves in um, that is often overstimulating, overwhelming, um, loud, and fast. So we'll get into that a little bit more, um, but I'm just hoping to empower you with more information about the trait and some of my favorite resources that I've found over the years. So, um, and first I wanna start on the positive with the gifts. Um, so people who are highly sensitive are, um, tend to be very thoughtful, very caring, with big hearts, um, insightful, wise, intuitive, very aware and observant, um, noticing a lot about others in the world around them, and caring and compassionate for, um, for people, the planet, animals, um, and all of that good stuff. So historically, we would find a lot of highly sensitive people as um, you know, the, the prophets, the advisor to the king or queen, the wise man, um, the medicine woman, the shaman, uh, the caregiver, the healer, the artist, the poet, um, these sorts of things. So it's important to just remember that these are valuable, um, valuable kinds of people in our culture. So uh, we know today now, um, as we have more brain science, that there are actual brain differences. So being a highly sensitive person is um, one of the types of neurodiversity. And I'm just gonna review like five main um, aspects of the trait. So the first one is deep thinking and deep processing. The second one is deep feeling. And so this means um, people who are highly sensitive have quite a, a wealth of a range of rich emotional spectrum. Um, so feeling wonder and appreciation, deeply touched by beauty and love, um, and also can be deeply hurt, profoundly sad, severely anxious, like the whole spectrum all in. Um, the third piece is creativity. Um, people who are highly sensitive are often pulling together a lot of different themes and patterns and um, information from all that they're observing and noticing around them and kind of pulling that in with a rich imagination um, into uh, creative works of all kinds. Um, the fourth piece is about high sensory intelligence. So um, people who are highly sensitive often have like super keen smelling and hearing um, are sensitive to touch and to lights. Um, and all of that physiology um, is just very responsive and kind of hyper aware. And so that also ties into the fifth piece, which is overstimulation and over arousal. Um, so, and that happens partly because again, the whole system and someone who's highly sensitive body, mind, and spirit is just very tuned in and very aware. So um, one little example I like to give is um, a grocery store example. So like if someone who's not highly sensitive walks into a grocery store and buys a few items and checks out, they maybe um, have like 100 points of data from that exchange, things they observe and take in, um, whether they're aware of it or not. And then a highly sensitive person walks in and does the same sort of exact uh, situation and they might take in a thousand pieces of data from that little grocery store visit. Or if they're highly, highly sensitive, like really far on the spectrum, because like all things, many things, um, sensitivity is definitely on a spectrum. 
People on the highest end of the spectrum might be taking in 10,000 pieces of data from that grocery store exchange. And so um, therefore it makes sense that the highly sensitive person is gonna be you know, maybe more drained or whatever by an experience. So one thing I think is really important to point out is people who are highly sensitive do not have less bandwidth or it's not that they like can't handle things. Um, it's just that if this is the bandwidth, it's going to get much more filled up in a highly sensitive person much faster because this exact same scenario is full of so much more data. Um, one of the things I, I like to call invisible data, highly sensitive people are picking up on invisible data all the time. So this is stuff that kind of people who aren't highly sensitive aren't necessarily noticing or observing or being aware of. Um, it can be like micro expressions, just subtle body language, um, energy, emotions, and and other sort of just really nuanced or subtle um pieces of information. And on that note, um, I would just like to tuck in about being an empath. So some people who are highly sensitive are also an empath. Um, this is different than empathy. Empathy is more like a skill and putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Being an empath is sort of like being wired to actually pick up on and feel other people's emotions or energy around you and actually feel that in your own body. And I'm going to do another video later. So please stay tuned for that um, about being an empath and some great resources um, for that as well. But um, so back to the trait of uh, high sensitivity. Again, the point is because there's so much input coming in and because highly sensitive person is um, like physically, emotionally, and, you know, from the heart, um, more perceptive and responsive. Um, it's really critical that they live a different type of life than what works for most people in our culture. Um, otherwise, it will lead to physical health issues. It will lead to chronic illness and to mental health um, anxiety, depression, addiction. Um, and it's okay to live a different kind of life and to do what works for you. Um, that is my main message here. Um, and then one note on that too, because of the word sensitivity, I think sometimes this trait gets so, um, misunderstood. And so I just want to say that, um, while the various elements of being a highly sensitive person, they have overlap with some other types of um, neurodiversity or other types of personalities, but there are also some gaps. And so people are um, easily like misdiagnosed or mislabeled uh, with this trait too. And that's another reason it's important to really understand it um, and look into the resources that I'll share with you later. Um, because when you can identify it, you can make life a lot easier and just kind of go down a path that's um, going to be empowering for you. So um, yeah, the main thing I want to say so that you can be a healthy person or help your loved one or person you care for who's highly sensitive is that um, People who are highly sensitive really need to protect their time and space and energy, and um, they need a lighter calendar. They need a slower pace. They need downtime and quiet time. They need peaceful environments um, and to spend time in nature. They need to really emphasize self-care and um, and to have supportive people on their team and in their relationships who can accept them for who they are and um, and respect them to cultivate a life that is um, healthy and positive um, for them. A lot of highly sensitive people struggle immensely with having healthy boundaries. And that's because they sense other people's feelings and they don't want to disappoint or they sense other people's anger, frustration, misunderstanding when they have a healthy boundary. And so that makes it harder for them to actually take care of themselves or live the life that is um, appropriate or most um, aligned for them. 
So um, one other thing, a lot of people who are most, most people who are highly sensitive are also introverts, which just means they draw their energy from within um, versus extroverts who tend to draw energy from being with other people and externally. Um, and I've got a great book I'll mention in the notes um, for introverts as well. Um, so uh, yeah, I am going to just share three of my favorite resources and I encourage you to um, share this with anybody who you think might be highly sensitive or just who works in schools with children um, in a caregiving or healthcare environment. Um, understanding this trait is so important for people's well-being and also allows all those wonderful gifts that I mentioned at the beginning to shine and, and kind of help us all. So the first thing I want to mention is the newest book that I read about this trait, and it's just called Sensitive. Sorry about the glare. It's by Jen Graneman and Andre Solo. This book is excellent. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, the hidden power of the highly sensitive person in a loud, fast, too much world. I think that's a good summary. So check out these guys' book and they also have some online stuff too. And then um, second resource I wanna mention on my fancy post-it note is the therapist, Julie Bieland. That last name is B-J-E-L-L-A-N-D. And she specializes in um, the HSP trait. So therapist specializing in that. Um, please take her quiz on her website. It's fantastic. And check out her website, which has a ton of free, really helpful resources. Um, I cannot say enough good things about Julie's work. And then she also has, um, oh, the podcast on my post-it, the HSP podcast. It's fantastic. I love the ones that where she's talking in particular, but that's a great show. Um, and then she also has like a social media for highly sensitive people group um, on her site that seems really awesome too. So you can check that out. And then the third resource is therapist Elaine Aaron, who is really the one who coined the term. Um, and she wrote this book, um, The Highly Sensitive Person, that kind of started getting the word out. Um, she, Elaine also has a quiz on her site, um, so you can check that out too. And then please, 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 if you have a child in your life, who's highly sensitive, read Elaine's book, The Highly Sensitive Child, um, helping our children thrive when the world overwhelms them. So yes, we are living in intense times and that can be even harder for someone who's sensitive and is picking up on so much going on with people and with the world. And so um, I just hope this these resources will help empower you. And please stay tuned for my other videos. I'm gonna make the one about more detail for HSPs and the one about empaths. Thanks, bye-bye.